All right, I think we're live. Appreciate everybody bearing with us as we let uh, the attendees filter in. Um, and we'll get started here for our webinar about the critical functional pillars of a modern SOC uh, and essentially the key components uh, from Cortex perspective of delivering effective security operations practices in the modern threat landscape. And the way that I have typically defined modern over the last year or so is in the post COVID world um, after you know, the big mass uh, migration to remote workforces, cloud adoption, acceleration and uh, automation, both from the attack and defense side of security. So uh, I'll jump right into it. I, I will say that I want to keep this as interactive as possible. So as you have questions, please put them in the Q&A. I'm typically uh, of a conversational nature when I'm presenting. So I have some folks keeping an eye on the Q&A to stop me if, if there's anything. So please don't hesitate to reach out there if, if there's something you want me to dig into or, or have a question. Uh, but just a little bit about myself. I'm the director of the managed security practice here at Cortec. I have 11 years of experience in the industry creating, building, selling, developing managed security solutions. Um, and I've built, grew, and scaled multiple SOCs at various MSSPs. And I'm very happy to be here at Cortec uh, as we bring a very robust managed security solution to the market. And, um, you know, I feel like I have a firm understanding of the contemporary MSSP market and, and the challenges that customer face and hopefully a good perspective on, um, you know, solutions to those challenges. So the agenda of what we're going to cover today at a high level is just, you know, an overview of the state of security in 2024, what we're up against from a bad actor and threat perspective and how we transform our security operations to uh, mitigate and prevent uh, as, as much as possible respond to those threats and, and then you know direct solutions to contemporary problems from from a conceptual level we will be primarily focused on uh, just the general components no no tools or specific solutions from a technology perspective but the general uh, elements and components of technology people process and tools together um, that are required in today's day and age and then wind up with uh, you know addressing any of the q a that we don't get to throughout the presentation so just very quickly you know who is core tech for for folks uh, on on the phone that might not know we are the largest and number one azure cloud provider in north america uh, with a very robust investment in the microsoft security platform and delivering services and outcomes uh, through through the microsoft solutions we partner with uh, other organizations outside of microsoft but when it comes to cloud and security, uh, we are aligned. We're aligning security best practices to the Microsoft solution set uh, to deliver these outcomes. Um, two of the things that I want to highlight here is uh, we are a recent inductee to the Microsoft Intelligent Security Association, which is a, a very small group of folks that have been validated by Microsoft to basically produce the best possible customer outcomes driven by um, multiple uh, realms of statistics in, in that front. We're also SOC 2 ISO 27001 compliant, and we do a lot of work in the defense industrial space uh, and therefore are a registered practitioner for CMMC, CMMMC uh, certification, which is, is a big hot topic in that space and will continue to be. So just a little bit of our credentials there and, and who we are as, as a company. Um, so, so I want to first touch on the state of security in 2024, and these are probably statistics that, that a lot of the attendees are, are aware of in, in some sense, but I think these really highlight the need for good operational security, uh, being able to detect, respond, mitigate threats in a very timely uh, manner to, to, to reduce business risk. So uh, global breach, as everybody knows, uh, it, it's a constant risk to any organization. And there were 2,200 confirmed data breaches, roughly, um, as discovered by the Verizon data breach reports in 2023. Anybody in this business uh, for any amount of time knows that that number is probably triple um, you know, when it comes to the real number of breaches. But those are just reported breaches that you know, had to be uh, publicly uh, identified. Uh, but, but we expect this to continue to arise. The attackers have very lucrative means of 
uh, abstracting uh, or extracting money from organizations, the demand is high and, and therefore the demand for good security must be high. Um, and the impact to organizations is downtime. So uh, the average downtime in, in 2023 uh, was roughly 22 days, which just imagine what impact that might have on your organization, your business, if you're down for 22 days in, in various capacities, um, you know, with most modern businesses relying on technology to serve their core constituency, their customers, their their uh, revenue streams, 22 days can, can bring a business to its knees. And, and that's just, you know, the operational costs, the, the hard ransomware uh, dollar amounts continue to rise with, you know, almost $2 million being the average ransomware payout in 2023. Uh, the other interesting statistic from that same IBM report is it's approaching $11 million for healthcare. Uh, they are the most vulnerable and the ones that can suffer the least amount of da downtime and the bad guys know that. So their ransomware uh, ransom notes are, are higher, uh, which is which is very unfortunate and, um, you know, continues to be be a huge challenge for the industry. Um, the other thing that, that I thought was interesting as I was researching some statistics in the, the Verizon data breach was over 85% of breaches involved a human element, whether it's clicking on a phishing email, um, you know, having com credentials be compromised through, through other means um, or some sort of social engineering. Humans remain the number one vulnerability uh, that is very, very hard to uh, just inherently protect with a technical solution. So you need people in process to continuously be able to monitor uh, potential human errors that, that lead to breaches. And then, you know, depending on your industry, there's always regulatory pressure, but if you get breached and it's significant and customer data is exposed, um, it's, it's very likely that you're gonna be subject to increased regulatory pressure as, as that result. So again, this, this is probably not news to anybody on the phone, but just wanted to quantify the importance of good cybersecurity and the uh, impact that you can have if you don't, uh, you know, have have a good security operation center in the modern world. So, so when we take a look at, at the attackers and, and their motivations, um, again, this is this is a growing sector of business, unfortunately, in, in our world. Uh, it's estimated at an eleven trillion dollar uh, market opportunity globally, which is just scary and disconcerting, but it's reality. And, um, you know, successful cyber attacks are now kind of offered as a service. Uh, there are many foreign entities that are for hire um, where they're looking for investors to uh, split the bounties of their ransomware and other malicious campaigns. And, and honestly, with, with some organizations for, for just a couple hundred dollars, you can launch um, you know, a campaign to go out and attack organizations like, like your own uh, to try to siphon money from them via cybercrime. And, and that is the primary driver for cyber criminals. Um, at the end of the day, any organization, any technology asset is nothing but a revenue generating opportunity for these bad actors. Um, however, they can figure out a way to take money from your organization through their tools and means of exploiting vulnerabilities they're going to, whether it's more ransomware, whether it's social engineering and payroll thefts, whether it's check fraud, um, whether it's uh, tricking somebody into believing that they are a legitimate vendor that, that you owe an invoice to um, and anything in between, that's 95 to 97% of commercial cases of data breaches and security events are just tied to the bad actor wanting money. Now there's other motivations that, that might be relevant to your specific organization in, in very small cases. Nation state motivation, uh, typically targeting, you know, government adjacent entities. Uh, there could be, you know, somebody that has a vendetta against your organization personally or uh, professionally. Um, there's activist organizations that believe that uh, they are they are a Robin Hood type actor uh, targeting larger corporations. But for the core tech customer base, at least, you know, the main vulnerability is that your organization has assets that you're that they can't exploit for financial gain. And at the end of the day, when something like this strikes your business, it is going to be painful. Um, no matter how 
well you are prepared. Um, if you're not able to prevent and mitigate the blast radius or the impact of a cybersecurity incident and you're not extremely well trained with the right people process and tools to to remediate this quickly uh, if they get to any significant level of breach and um, you know locking of cyber assets it, it's painful it, it always takes much longer to recover no matter how prepared you are um, so the smaller the fire the faster the recovery Again, hopefully this is not news to everybody, but really just want to set the stage for why this is important and what we're up against, and um, therefore how we transform our security operations in 2024 to help reduce our risk and increase our posture against uh, these potentially negative events. So, um, you know, security operations matter to modern businesses for all the reasons that I just stated. Essentially, it is a risk mitigation effort for the business. And the, the ways that you can most effectively uh, mitigate this risk in, in the modern age is security op operation, security automation within your security operations center. Um, there's been studies from IBM that says, you know, if you have effective security automation in place, uh, to detect and respond to security events, you can reduce your time to contain and remediate a breach by up to 74 days. Um, the other piece of that, which is you know continuous monitoring and, and applying security automation with human intelligence and, and human investigation, um, is going to significantly reduce your exposure and ability to respond to an event uh, by uh, orders of magnitude than if you're just hoping that the tools and controls that you have from a technical perspective are, are going to do their job um, effectively. There's always zero days. There's always creative um, ways for, for folks to trick users, and we need to have folks on the lookout for that. Modern XDR tools, though, are, are very important, and they, and they do help, uh, and they do significantly uh, enhance our ability to detect and respond. A lot of modern attacks aren't just, you know, bang, bang happen within a day. They start with a small amount of access and over time they look to elevate that access, gain um, the ability to to impact other systems and as wide of a blast radius as possible before they really hit the red button. Uh, but XDR, you know, proliferated throughout an environment can help, you know, identify a potential malicious or suspicious event uh, quicker and so that you can cut it off before it happens. So typically what Mandiant sees, who is probably uh, kind of the historical um, leader in the incident response phase is that, you know, a significant cyber breach from start to finish, initial access to execution of the malicious code is typically 287 days uh, from, from item one to item X. Um, However, when, when you have XDR in place, you, you can reduce that to 43 days because you're able to detect it sooner and respond before a significant impact is, is executed. And, and obviously the quicker that you're able to respond, the more uh, negative financial impact that you're going to be able to avoid. All right, so getting into kind of the, the tangible problems uh, that security operation centers and just operational security faces today. And, and from my perspective, the biggest problem that is uh, only going to continue to grow probably, you know, to infinity is data growth, right? Every time data is used, viewed, um, manipulated, uh, whether it's by humans or automated processes, computer processes, there's a log of that event. And when there is something being exploited for a security um, breach or, or a security attack, a log of that event can be the key indicator that you need to respond. But if you take a log of every single time data is accessed, touched, modified, changed, uh, and multiply that by every user, every piece of data, every system across your entire uh, technology landscape. I mean, just imagine how many events that is, you know, to the tune of billions of events per day for organizations uh, across all these different uh, potential threat vectors uh, of technology. And if it's disparate and you don't have good detection mechanisms that are centralized, this can just become a giant haystack to find the one needle that can 
ultimately bring a business to its knees. And um, it, it's a huge problem. It's a problem that's going to continue to grow. So we need to really start organizing that data now into effective solutions. So if you are able to take all of those data sources and normalize them into one aggregated system that can make sense of all of it, that can that can correlate all of this information together uh, in a very fast and scalable way um, to let the noise be the noise, let normal be normal and, and you know, do some checks and, and not worry about it, but then be able to detect starting with suspicious to potentially malicious to definitely malicious to critical security event in as close to real time as possible. That That's really the only way uh, to have a chance against some of these modern threat techniques. So centralizing your data collection across a wide range of on-premises user data, cloud data, uh, and network data into one common schema that allows a single system or platform of systems to run analytics, apply threat intelligence, and make sense of what's going on, and then signal the security tooling when there is something that needs to be looked at or responded to is, is paramount. And, and the key element of this, which is often overlooked, is the scalability of performance, right? You can have a system that is able to do this from a logical perspective, but if it doesn't have the ability to scale up and down from a, a volume perspective based on um, you know, high transactional times of day, based on a project that's going on or a new cloud service that's spun up, if you don't have a, a cloud-based system that has the mechanisms to maintain performance, whether it's low volume or high volume, um, you're at risk when there's a high volume time that's taking a lot longer to churn through all of these data elements, uh, which means it could take a lot longer to detect or even fail on some of its analytics rules um, in, in cases where it, it just can't keep up with the amount of, of data being uh, processed. And so legacy on-premises kind of traditional database focused systems are not able to scale with the modern data problem that we have. So cloud-based scalable uh, security solutions is really where the industry is moving. And the quicker you can get there, the quicker you can optimize those solutions, both for performance and cost reduction. Uh, because you know, putting all of this data into a cloud-based system, um, it has to go somewhere and there has to be compute to process that and, and it can uh, potentially get expensive, but the quicker you're able to get on this platform, normalize everything and, and give it the intelligence and signaling to optimize uh, the, the less cost impact you're gonna have from just running these tools. So that's that's kind of what good data aggregation looks like, but then you have to sift through the noise. Right, so transforming large disparate data sets into actionable security insights has been an ongoing problem since the dawn of cybersecurity, and it only continues to exasperate. And as certain problems are solved, there's new ones that are introduced by new digital platforms, um, by SaaS applications, by new user uh, vulnerabilities, and, and just technical vulnerabilities, zero days, etc. So, you know, if, if, even if you can solve the problem of data volume overload, you have to make sure that you can effectively apply good analytics to detect advanced exploit packages. And it's very common nowadays that these exploit packages are, are automated and AI driven, um, being able to navigate to exploit a vulnerability quicker and quicker. So that means that these systems need to be able to apply analytics to detect these um, just even a second quicker than they're able to exploit them so that the control systems and, and human um, element can, can respond and, and mitigate the risk in, in a timely fashion. Uh, there's dynamic and volatile threat intelligence sources. Threat intel is only as good um, as the minute that it's needed, right? And threat intel is constantly recycled. IPs are changing ownership and um, you know, designation every single second. Millions of IPs are, are changing what they're assigned to uh, both publicly and privately all the time. So if you have threat intelligence from last week, it's a good, there's a good chance that 10% of that, if not more, is, is completely kind of 
garbage now for, for lack of a better term and um, going to be recycled. We've seen cases where if your threat intel is not up to date, you can obviously miss something that should be identified as malicious, but just as bad from an operational side of things, if you have, let's say, a, an IP that is indicated as malicious, but then that IP gets taken down by, let's just say, a, a law enforcement source, and it gets now wiped and then resold to somebody like Google, and that threat intel is not updated, and now Google owns that IP, and it might be assigned to a business service that is regularly leveraged by your business, when all of your users go to hit that or your systems reach out to that IP that is now legitimate and honestly going to be a part of your normal everyday transactional activity, we, we've seen cases where there could be 100,000 alerts in a day due to faulty threat intelligence, which is going to cause a lot of noise. It's also going to cause a lot of performance issues within the SOC and security tooling. Um, so you need to keep your threat intel up to date and be able to correlate that threat intel uh, in, in modern ways to detect kind of AI and machine learning uh, driven mechanisms for um, automated and AI driven attack techniques. So the solution to that is contextual threat analytics um, with very good threat intelligence that is constantly updated. And to achieve that, you need a unified and integrated tool set. So that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be one vendor across the board. However, the integration points and the pieces of your detection mechanisms need to be very well architected to work together constantly. They need to be highly available. They need to be able to process all of the data that's being brought in, and you need to have visibility across every single element of technology that could be a threat to your organization, whether it's a, a VPN endpoint, whether it's a user endpoint, a, a cloud VM, a legacy on-premise uh, server, uh, and everything in between. And the data needs to be centralized into one tool set or a combination of tool sets that are, that are managed as a platform in order for dynamic controls to be applied to that. So the ability for SOC resources to quickly um, execute uh, a response to a signal of malicious activity is extremely important. Um, you know, just even having to navigate from one piece of software to a native system in, in traditional manual fashion could be the difference of five minutes, uh, which could be the difference of um, being able to isolate a, a particular malicious process uh, before that's able to be executed into potentially a, a malware event. Um, so, so having it all in one platform that's interoperable and, and hopefully uh, a single pane of glass or be able to quickly pivot to uh, execute control mechanisms is extremely important. So having one single integrated platform, not necessarily one tool to rule them all, but one platform that has very good interoperability for, for all of the automated and human-driven response activities is extremely, extremely important in today's day and age. And, and that leads to the second problem is speed or lack thereof kills, right? Um, the, the difference between saving the day and having a two-week breach scenario where everybody in IT um, is all hands on deck for as long as they can stay awake every single day to, to rebuild a system can, can often be minutes. And manual processes and lack of automation really put you behind the eight ball uh, when, when the difference can be you know, minutes uh, between containing a breach and, and letting it proliferate to all of the critical assets of your organization. And, and at the end of the day, the scalability of human resources is, is extremely limited, right? You can throw bodies at the problem, which sometimes you know, is, is necessary, but you need to maximize their ability uh, to affect an effective response um, as much as possible. And, and the best way to do that is through orchestration, automation, and advanced analytics driven by AI. So having automated threat detection and response where you, know, you, you have the systems configured to notice a malicious activity and, and stop it without human intervention is obviously kind of the gold standard uh, or, or I guess the, the pie in the sky that, that you're always gonna be driving towards but never get there. So you gotta recognize that 
uh, and be able to achieve that as much as possible, but then also develop um, orchestrated playbooks that that allow analysts to quickly execute actions that, that the tool might not you know, have the ability to auto automatically. And the best way to achieve that is having very good analytics that you can trust that are low and false positive, that provide all of the contextual information for an analyst to make quick decision, and then give them the tools to be able to, with a couple of clicks of a button, uh, orchestrate a response that, that's going to limit the impact, um, whether it's isolating a user account and revoking their session tokens, whether it's isolating a particular VM that you suspect uh, could be in infected or have escalated privileges of a malicious bad actor on, um, whether it's isolating cloud services, um, you know, for, for a short period of time, while that might cause some operational impact, it could prevent, you know, a much larger and wider critical security event. And so, you know, kind of summarizing all of that, um, you know, as you look at the key pillars of, of modern detection and response from, from our perspective, independent of tools, right? There, there are many tools that can accomplish this, but an appropriate uh, platform kind of has all of these uh, features operated by very fine-tuned processes. Um, and, you know, digital transformation is going to continue to accelerate and security needs to keep pace with that to effectively protect their digital assets and reduce the risk of cybercrime um, and a negative impact both financially and operationally to the business. So you need holistic visibility. You need to be able to uh, ingest all of the flood of data that's being generated on your network and within any uh, technology environment that, that you're responsible for manage. But just as importantly, if not more importantly, you need to be able to make sense of that data and have your technology stack be able to serve you up actionable information based on advanced analytics uh, at scale and at speed. You need to be able to have an agile and adaptive response mechanism that is a combination of skilled resources and playbooks and tools that they can easily and quickly execute uh, when there is a signal. And, and that response needs to be orchestrated across every threat vector across the network, across the cloud, across the user environment, endpoints, servers, you name it. You need to make sure that your ability to respond isn't just contained to a single uh, set of technology. You know, yes, we are confident that we can respond via EDR on servers and endpoints, but what happens if you're getting attacked at a native cloud service level? What happens if somebody um, is impersonating a user and has a legitimate or appears to be legitimate access to escalated privileges on these uh, on different devices. The ability to detect and respond across the organization uh, with an orchestrated tool set is imperative and having that all interoperable for your security analyst or for your, your third party provider um, is imperative so that they can very quickly um, be able to prevent everything that I'm sure everybody watching this is is kept up at night about. So those are the core principles. Um, there are, you know, Cortec has a perspective on how to achieve this with, with various platform-based solutions. But at the end of the day, today's webinar was really about framing the mindset of, of the key pillars that, that you need to be thinking about. And in future webinars, we'll, we'll kind of put forth solutions that we think are best of breed that can execute on this with demonstrations and um, you know use cases to show you know how uh, the modern tools can can affect this. But that's all I have for you today. Um, you know I don't know if any of our moderators have seen any um, activity in the chat or if there's any questions that anybody would like to ask now to get a little bit more specific. But hopefully you know this is good foundational knowledge about uh, the, the types of things that every organization should be thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. Colin, there is a question uh, out in the chat. Yeah, there are. We're looking at several different vendors now or building our own SOC internally. Um, we're seeing a lot of terms like EDR, MDR versus XDR and some vendors coming to the table with their solutions. Is MDR the same as a SOC? 
That is a good question, and the answer depends on the vendor that you're talking about uh, or you're, that you're talking to. So um, I, I would say in some scenarios, yes, but that term is loosely defined. So I would encourage you to um, kind of, you know, to, to what I was talking about in this presentation, really dig under the hood to see what is there in their MDR solution. Are they able to take in data from network-based resources and do real-time analytics on the network-based resources? Are they able to look at native cloud services and what types of use cases and detection mechanisms do they have for um, you know, a modern tactic in an Azure environment, for example? Typically, or traditionally, MDR has been focused on the endpoint and the server environment with agent-based detection, which while is should be a key component of modern threat defense, is just that. It's one component. And that's where we see a lot of folks having, you know, when, when we go in to assess their environment, well, we have an MDR solution, we're covered. Your servers are covered, your endpoints are covered, but there's nothing looking at your user behavior. There's nothing looking at your native cloud services. There's nothing looking at your SaaS applications. There's nothing tying all of that together to detect, you know, a multi-chain sophisticated attack. And if the response calls for something outside of killing a process on a server or a workstation, there's there's significant risk there. So um, now with that said, you know, MDR has transformed over time to, to XDR. So typically if somebody's saying they're XDR, they probably have a more robust solution, uh, more in line with what we're talking about here. MDR is typically you know, something that you're gonna wanna add additional controls, analytics, and visibility to. Um, and, and that's where we see the industry transforming into more of a XDR or platform-based managed solution. So hopefully, that helps um, like a lot of things in security. It depends, but I would say MDR might leave some of the stuff we're talking about here on the table. Let me see if I see anything else um, there. Philip, thanks for that question. A anything else that you see in the chat? Nothing else that I see at this time. Fantastic. Well. If there are specific questions and, and you know the devil's always in the details uh, every organization is different you know the, these key tenants and pillars uh, in, in our opinion can apply to every organization but you know the 20 percent delta between organizations is really um, going to make the difference for, for the outcomes specific to your company uh, so you know I, I would encourage you to kind of be thinking in this manner, but you know, reach out to an organization like Vortec or to your vendor to say, okay, we need to make sure we have all of these things in place. How is your tool or your platform going to enable my resources as well as maybe other third-party providers um, to operate in this manner? So if, if that's all there is, I thought I'd navigate it to the thank you slide, but thank you very much for taking some time out of uh, your day. Um, I encourage you to, to join the future sessions of this webinar series to, to get a little deeper into the technical elements of, of how we're doing this in, in the real world and some of the advancements in the specific technology that is uh, enabling a lot of the things that I've talked about today. But unless there's any other questions, I'll give some people a little bit of time back um, in your day to go try to work on solving the problems of security that, that all of us are so invested in. Thank you.